Our first bumpy view of Tijuana's drug war reveals a rural neighborhood filled with nervous federal police. What happened inside that cement building on the right has horrified all of Mexico. Just two days earlier, police paraded the building's owner, 45-year-old Santiago Lopez, before the media. They say he used this hideaway to destroy the remains of hundreds of murder victims, cooking them in barrels of acid. ¿Cuánto tiempo estuviste haciendo todo esto? Como nueve, diez años. ¿Y en ese tiempo cuántos cuerpos? Trescientos. The Mexican press dub him the stewmaker. It's believed Lopez worked for Teodoro Garcia, or El Teo. El Teo is one of Tijuana's most notorious gangsters. Over the last year, more than 6,000 people have been murdered in Mexico's drug war. Some 700 of them were here in Tijuana alone. Vicente Calderon is a respected Tijuana journalist. El Teo is such a larger-than-life character, um, and yet nobody seems to be able to find him. Why is that? Well, to begin, I think there's a lot of people afraid of him, and with good reasons. He has been accused or mentioned as responsible for killing a lot of police officers and a lot of their rivals with no mercy, and, and he's a brutal killer. Those killings are often gruesome, ritualistic, intended to send a message. In November, the bodies of several police officers were found decapitated, the heads arranged in threes in reference to El Teo's initials. Outside this restaurant, owned by a rival of El Teo, police found barrels containing human remains with a note suggesting all those who oppose El Teo will be soup. Outside the stewmaker's hideaway, the scene is very tense. What you should know is that none of the federal officers here wanted to be interviewed on camera. Now, off camera, they tell us that they're worried about their families and that given the alleged nature of the butcher who worked here, they don't feel like they have enough protection. There are 12 of them with automatic weapons, but they feel that is not enough. So extensive is Alteo's reach, even the attorney general of the state of Baja, California, lives in constant danger. Do you worry about your safety or the safety of your wife, your children? No, I'm not. Of course, it's dangerous, but uh, this is my work. This is uh, things that I believe. How many armed guards do you have? 22. Wow. That's serious. Yes, it is. Back in town, two more people are murdered outside this home. Police call it a drug killing. It is just our first day in Tijuana. On day two, we ride with the state police. On this night, there are only eight assigned to patrol all of Tijuana, a city of almost two million people. Officers cover their faces. They tell us it's difficult to know who to trust. They travel at high speed, often for their own protection, sort of like a high-speed chase, only in reverse. Here and there, they stop, sometimes to check vehicles, other times in response to calls. Here, people reported seeing men with guns. By the time we arrive, the men are gone. Not all police are honest. Local, state, and federal police have all been caught cooperating with the cartels. Drug traffickers are so powerful, and, and they achieve this level of impunity that they are now not even bother to be able to bribe the police officers. They will, they can just kill them. Day three, we visit a local police station one hour south of Tijuana. Police here have just finished spackling some 200 bullet holes in their station's walls. Last week, El Teo and the stewmaker were reportedly having a party nearby. That's when the stewmaker was arrested. It's believed El Teo ordered this police station shot up in retribution. As for El Teo, he escaped, a fact that won't be explained for two more days. Back in Tijuana, three men in this dark car have been executed. Again, it's thought to be drug-related. Three days have gone by, and five people have died. Under federal law, local police start the investigation of all murders. But if they involve organized crime, which they almost always do, the federal police and prosecutors take over, which has created problems. Again, the state attorney general. There has been a perception in the past that maybe the federal government was, was aligned with one of the cartels. Well, there's a lot of problems, but it's not just a problem of the policemen, it's from the judges. Have you prosecuted a case where you felt the judge had been corrupted? 
I have to prove, not just to think about it. This is so difficult because. But, you your, gu but your gut suggested to you that could be, yes. this judge has yeah, been corrupted. Of course. Es un crimen. Our fourth day, a press conference. Family members of kidnapping victims, they call them the disappeared. No ransom ever demanded, no body ever recovered. Everyone here, though, is thinking the same thing that maybe the answer to what happened to all their loved ones lies with the stew maker. It is day five, and the citizens of Tijuana wake up to the news of how El Teo escaped last week's police operation. Zeta, an investigative newspaper, hits the stands with a headline story, El Teo escapes walking away. According to the article, Tijuana's most feared criminal escaped, not because he was lucky, but because he was escorted from a party walked down the beach into a waiting SUV by a group of federal highway police. Adela Navarro is the co-editor of Zeta. It's corruption, mostly in the federal police, that will allow the narco-traffickers to continue to do business without any consequences at all. We have met police that feel they and their families are the hunted traveled in the wake of criminals who corrupt and terrorize, and found people who have largely lost faith, but somehow not hope. All this in just five days in Mexico's drug wars. For World Focus, I'm John Larson in Tijuana, Mexico.